I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. This is Leo Says number 10. Uh, I've got a stinking cold, so apologies for that. It's the new year, so happy new year. And that, quite frankly, is the end of the good news because apart from that, it's all either bad or weird. The odd stuff, which is the best I've got, the most cheery stuff, is that... Uh, AMD's Vega Frontier Edition graphics card, the very first showing of Vega, which came out at, I forget what price it was, but it was blooming fortunes, uh, is now being marketed, would you believe, at Blockchain Pioneers, which sounds exactly like cryptocurrency miners. I, I cannot think of any other way of uh, putting that, uh, which would seem to be something of a vault fast. Now, admittedly, the Frontier Edition was never marketed at gamers, but nonetheless, Blockchain Pioneers, that's a new one on me. The price also appears to have dropped a little bit, but it's still horribly expensive. Uh, having said all that, I think we can say that uh, Vega Frontier Edition is something we can put to one side and never think of again. But uh, if you're mining cryptocurrency, uh, AMD apparently is showing you some love, so that's nice. Uh, last week, uh, we had a few Intel uh, processors broke cover. Uh, there were at that stage in the game rumors which are clearly connected to CES, which is kicking off next week. Uh, these are the uh, Intel packages with AMD graphics. And the slide that we saw and Kit Guru covered in news shows a TDP of 100 watts for the whole package. That's a KB Lake CPU core and a Vega graphics core of unknown number of compute units. Uh, 100 watts seems a bit on the toasty side. You have to hope they're going to go lower than that. But nonetheless, it also suggests some decent graphics. Uh, be interested to see what pans out there. Quite clearly, that's going to be a CES thing. That's all there is to it. Uh, so the sooner we see that, the better. On the AMD mobile graphics front, the HP NV 15X. Uh, very strange that on AMD's website right now, they have the uh, HP NV powered by AMD with Vega graphics. As far as I can see, the APU has not actually launched. Uh, it's not in the newsroom. The last uh, news from AMD is back in December now. Uh, and yet their HP is selling or listing for sale uh, a, th uh, well, it is thin and light, but it's quite large laptop with Vega graphics. And yet the APU uh, seemingly never launched. So there we go. Still don't understand that. Again, CES is the obvious place for that product to launch. But uh, it does seem that we're going to have uh, AMD mobile graphics galore. Looking forward to that. Code names. Intel Monet Hill, uh, which has popped up on their list of code names. Apparently, it's a desktop platform. And beyond that, we know absolutely nothing. And the curious thing is speculation about that suggests it might be to do with 14 nanometer plus 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 in 2019. Entirely speculative, this. But... If there's any truth in that at all, it suggests that 10 nanometer, effective 10, 10 nanometer from Intel on the desktop is off a huge distance in the future. Now, it has to be said, as I'm going to cover in a moment, Intel has various problems at the moment. And uh, whilst obviously the people in the fabs and the people working with current products, you'd think are two separate groups. Nonetheless, the idea that they can't get 10 nanometer to work or work happily or yield properly or whatever the precise problems might be, uh, well, couldn't do it last year, can't do it this year, apparently can't do it, you know, until, well, can't do it next year if this Monet Hill comes to fruition. So goodness knows when we're going to get 10 nanometer. But uh, another code name for yet another spin of what is, well, I suppose, effectively Sandy Bridge in a way. And then a couple of days ago, all hell broke loose when the Register got their hands on a story. Uh, the Register, a British news site. Uh, so it seems that Google's Project Zero had found a couple of security problems with CPUs, uh, a broad spread of CPUs, and the Register got their hands on it and published the story, which is a little irresponsible because uh, one of the two problems is about to be fixed, uh, but has not yet been fixed. So we've got two problems with two really fruity names. The first is Meltdown, which specifically affects Intel CPUs. And the second is Spectre, which sounds absolutely uh, James Bond-esque and is to do with speculative branch prediction. Uh, so this is where we get into an awful lot of uh, haze. And the reason we're getting into haze is because Meltdown can be fixed, but there's going to be a cost. Uh, Meltdown can be fixed by patching the operating system, whether it's uh, Mac OS, Linux, or Windows, um, because, of course, Intel CPUs are used on all of those platforms. Uh, and we're talking here desktop CPUs and Xeons for sure, and I would assume, but need to double-check, actually, mobile processors because it's the same architecture. Uh, 
some very specific processes are not covered by this. Uh, we've got a very specific atom and we've got itanium. Uh, so basically everything else that you care about and going back, as I say, to Sandy Bridge. Now, the thing is that uh, an attack can be launched which basically gives access to uh, what is supposed to be protected kernel memory contents thereof. The point being is it turns out actually uh, the protected kernel memory is not protected and you can apparently attack this using JavaScript in your browser. So this is going to be fixed by patching operating systems and the reason uh, that the register, register has been a bit premature is that Microsoft uh, has, we are told, uh, a big update of uh, coming in Patch Tuesday, which is next Tuesday. Coincidentally, the opening day of CES, so that's a load of fun. Uh, the thing is that that patch is going to basically shift the content. It's going to put a, a, a step in the process of reading kernel memory, and that should stop uh, meltdown uh, attacks occurring. The thing is there's bound to be a hit, because if you're adding a step in the chain, that's going to cost. The question then becomes which workloads are affected. At the moment, it would appear that games, for example, very likely barely affected. Afterwards, the CPU talking to the GPU talking to your monitor. Uh, and how much kernel memory is required there. The concern, obviously, is that the contents of protected kernel memory could be passwords and logons and such like, and you don't want people getting your mitts on those. Uh, by the sound of it, Meltdown simply should not have happened, just, just shouldn't have happened, but it has, and it affects a colossal number of CPUs. If you think back, say, five years, who was buying a CPU that wasn't one of the Intel desktop CPUs for their desktop machine, or indeed a Xeon for a workstation or a Xeon for server? It was just Intel across the piece. So this is a concern, but it can be patched. And we have to see what the implication is going to be, what the effect will be. There's basically no point in getting too upset about it, except for the point that Windows 10 will be patched for sure. Previous versions of Windows it remains to be seen. There are going to be people out there, Windows 8, Windows 7 machines, and I don't see why not Windows XP still, amazingly. Uh, will those OSs be patched against this? This is going to be one of those, it could be there'll be machines in existence basically forever that are vulnerable to meltdown, but this is a specific Intel problem, and uh, there we go. The thing with this is, you would expect, therefore, that AMD in particular would be absolutely crowing Intel problem, AMD benefits. But not so, because at the same time we have Spectre, which affects Intel, AMD, and ARM, and is uh, to do with speculative branch prediction. This is this thing to do with out-of-order processing, where... Uh, we 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 just we talk about the uh, pipeline inside a CPU as being like the production line in the car factory. Step 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 step. Uh, entirely in sequence. You can't bolt the petrol tank in until you've got the what's it in place, and you can't put the bodywork under the petrol tank until the petrol tank's in there. Otherwise, you have to go back and start all over again. Uh, it's not entirely quite like that because. Spective branch prediction means that the process is going right. I need to take that value and that value and check, compare them to this value, but I don't yet have that first value. So I'm either going to go down this route or that route. I'm going to go down both routes simultaneously. And then when at some point at a later date that box is filled, then I will know I should have gone down this route and not that route. So I'm going to ignore the, that route that I was going down and just stick with this one. And the problem is the information then remains in registers but it would seem that Spectre allows malware and bad people to tell the processor to head down a, a speculative route, and that gives them access to the contents of your memory. But you need to be very hands-on to do that. This is not Java in a browser. To add to the complication, and we are starting to get information, but initially it was just as hazy as hazy can be. There are three vectors of attack that Spectre can go down. AMD is vulnerable to one of them and only one of them, and apparently they claim it is the one that is the least likely to happen. So if you have an AMD machine, it would seem you're relatively safe. Frankly, Spectre, on the one hand, it's terrifying because it can't be fixed, apparently. On the other hand, it seems unlikely to occur, whereas Meltdown, browser, Java, oh dear. So Spectre is the big scary one, but there's nothing you can do. And this also applies to ARM and such like, uh, whereas Meltdown is going to be patched. The question is what impact it will be. So we have to basically wait and see. Um, 
And it's also not very helpful that this week we're getting an awful lot of statements about which process, well, kind of vague statements about which processes are affected, but in terms of which workloads are affected and the performance, there's talk of 5 to 30 percent. But in which workloads? I mean, realistically, 5% hit is not good, but it's not the end of the world. 30%, that's not funny. And it depends, obviously, which workload you're talking about. So it's easy to put those sort of figures together and go, 30% hit in games, catastrophe. Unlikely to be that, but nonetheless, not good. There's been another aspect to this, however, which is that uh, Intel is clear that we're talking here Sandy Bridge onwards, but there have been talk about processors going back all the way to 1995, which as far as I can work out basically means when out-of-order processing came into being, and we're talking Pentium kind of uh, times. Uh, and this seems to me to be a mixing up of Meltdown and Spectre, which at the moment just simply is not helpful. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit tight and wait till next Tuesday. Apart from that, I have to go to CES. So this is going to be happening while I'm heading off there. And then we're going to get updates and we're going to be all the world's press, YouTube channels, blogs, websites and all the rest of it are going to be an entirely the wrong place to pick up on this. Well, I will anyway. And my colleague Dominic. Uh, so I'm going to leave the news chaps back at base at Kit Guru to have a look at this when the patch arrives and they can tell you exactly how good, bad or indifferent it actually is. Uh, so I can just take my hands off and not worry about it next week and sincerely hope it means that phones and such like aren't going to be demanding updates and insisting that we've got some massive uh, update and reboot to go on and laptops and all the other blooming devices that uh, run OS is pretty much everything I possess. Uh, so bad, Spectre bad, Meltdown bad, bad for at least 10 years, possibly 20 years. Uh, as to whether there actually been any attacks in the wild, we really don't know. But there is no point in panicking because you can do nothing about it apart from using your common sense. But this is not about data corruption. It's about the possibility of people hijacking your data. And if we're blunt about it, they can do it in a great many ways. So this has finally come to light, which is a good thing. It's a crying shame the news broke this week rather than when Microsoft had actually done Patch Tuesday. Such is life. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Fingers crossed the performance hit is not going to be too awful. Right, that's enough. I'm off to CES. This is Leo Says. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from KitGuru, click to subscribe. Do head over to kitguru.net to see all our other content. <laughs>